Okay, I wanted to talk about piston porting a little bit more um, and show a few things. I um, also wanted to show my uh, the piston that should have gone into my last build but did not due to a quality control miss by highway, um, which I'll show shortly. Um, thankfully, I caught it before running it. Um, all right, the back row, uh, those are 54 millimeter uh, 660 pistons. The front row is 660s that are in uh, the big bore 56 millimeter configuration. I, uh, I lined up the 54s to show that the saw salvage by the Duke has the widest skirt. The farmer techs all have the winged skirts. Um, the Duke's is just so much better. Um, just so much better. I have a, uh, a highway pop up in my, uh, my 54 millimeter build and it's, I'd say it's comparable to the, uh, the saw salvage, um, for 56 millimeters, you have a massive problem and everyone knows this, that the, uh, the skirts come in short and everyone kind of gives up on it there. They say it doesn't work because the skirts are short and that is, uh, that kind of, uh, the skirts do cause a massive problem. You have your intake uh, issue, which is, in my opinion, simple and easy to remedy with uh, JB. Um, but you have a more important issue you have uh, that you can't just easily get out of, which is uh, free porting. So if you don't have, I had to use uh, cylinder number three to have uh, no uh, no free port. I was about 1.25 millimeters, I want to say, about 50 thousandths. So 1.125, I guess, millimeters. Uh, from Freeport on my uh, my big bore build, but the first two uh, that I had gotten were Freeporting right out of the box, or they were like a hair away from Freeporting, um, and that's you know obviously without being able to drop the cylinder or anything. So why do I port them, and what ways do I port them? So let me see. For example, um, this is what I would call more of a work saw porting. Um, notice the substantially larger, uh, mass at the gudgeon pin boss right here. The reason for that is for heat soaking. Um, it's still smoothed in aerodynamic and I still have the windows flowed. Um, I never take any mass off of the crown. You want to have as much mass on the crown and at the gudgeon pin bosses as possible for heat transference. Um, the small end bearing is notorious for being a problem spot. Um, these right here, uh, the big bore 56s, these are for the felling saw build, so these aren't intended for long runs. I mean, they're not, you know, going to blow up on a five-minute run or something like that. I've never had a piston fail me, um, ever. In fact, I actually looked at... Um, I looked at the uh, the measurements on the Wiseco or Wiseco uh, 56 millimeter and checked out the thinnest point on the window legs on theirs and keep mine 25% wider at their thinnest points as a uh, an insurance as it were. Um, so other considerations. Um, well, when you're at the bottom of your stroke at bottom dead center. Um, actually, before I even get to that, let's compare. We have the, the short skirts, which we already know about, but short skirts means shorter windows. So when you get this uh, big bore that needs to be able to flow more, it has shorter passages. So when you get down to bottom dead center on this type of saw, the intake charge is going to be coming up through the crankcase, through the piston, through the windows, into the lowers. It needs to be able to flow them appropriately. Um, so it actually matters uh, uh, the the... the Opening up top matters most, and having a good uh, angle here matters. If you picture this inside of a cylinder, a closed cylinder, and then it's opening um, or flowing into the uh, the lowers, you would want it to be, you know, slick. I guess you would say. Um, actually, on that note, um, let's not forget everything we reduce from this is a reduction in rotating mass, and on something that's going over 100 miles an hour to zero, and then back. And it's doing that hundreds uh, over a hundred or hundreds of times per second. Um, weight matters. Aerodynamics matter. Um, so it's not just flow. Now there is a consideration um, displacement. 
you're going to add uh, bottom end displacement really quickly doing this. Um, these guys, uh, the, the 56s at least, come in at about 100 grams usually. I've seen guys who do a measurement and they've taken off 5 grams just by cleaning up the, uh, the casting imperfections, which are usually pretty obnoxious, as you can see. Um, five grams is about two cc's, um, based on aluminum being 2.5 grams per cc. And I know that these aren't pure aluminum, they're probably 10 to 30 percent, uh, silica, silicone, but it's a, it's a good rough guideline, I'd say. Um, so for the big bore, that actually works because we want to add some lower end displacement if we want to keep the OEM uh, ratio or specification for the relative uh, upper and lower end displacements. So anyway, some final considerations. Uh, rings, always use copper uh, rings, not the farmer tech rings, that goes without saying, I hope, uh, or highway rings. Um, make sure that your skirts overlap your ports by at least like a millimeter and a half. Um, Jennings and Blair's books both say two millimeters. So that's where I, st I try to stay. Um, my lowest is 3.5 millimeters between both wings. So I guess 1.75 uh, millimeter overlaps. Um, other things to look for is how much meat you have beneath, like on the lowest end of the crown beneath the bottom wing. It's kind of low on the highway, but not as bad as can be. One of these guys was really awful. Let's see if I can find him. Oh, please don't be the saw salvage. No, it's not. Okay, yep. Oh, yeah, it is this one. Yeah, it's the thinnest one of the batch. It's about half the size of the gap between the top and bottom ring. Um, I can't get a good, uh, good focus there, but you can see that on the highway. It's more like two-thirds. Um, I really should have done did calipers on that, but anyways, the, uh, the farmer tech's actually even thicker, which I like. Um, another, uh, another couple considerations, your, uh, your, your gudgeon pin, uh, circlips that keep the wrist pin from falling out in either direction. Um, if they have tabs, make sure those tabs are pointed outwards. Um, don't be worried about going, you know, close to the end of the rim here because that's a slot and the circlip's larger than the slot. When the gudgeon pin pushes into it, the tip of the gudgeon pin is actually uh, smaller than the inner diameter, so it it forces it to expand into the slot when it rams it. Um, so just make sure the wings or the tip is po of the circlip is pointing outwards. Um, I, I guess you can also notice I have uh, grooves carved for extra oil to get to the lower end bearing. This, uh, this piston here is not fully finished. Obviously, it's still kind of crude on some parts. It needs some polishing. I didn't finish it. It was going to be the piece de resistance of my uh, my big bore 660 build, but instead I just tightened the squish down and went with a flat top because, like an idiot, I, uh, I got it. I did all my measurements and everything and then ported it. And one of your first measurements after your skirts is your skirt widths is the locator pins. And I guess I just measured, what, you know, I checked this side obviously, thought it was all good, thought it was highway. I guess I didn't think I needed to check both sides, ported it and I'm getting ready to build it and then find that we're over three millimeters off center on the, uh, on the clutch side. Um, so, or I'm sorry, the PTO side rather. So um, yeah. I can't use it because the uh, the end of a ring could end up hanging up in my transfers. So now I just have a 90% done fancy paperweight. Unless the seller lets me swap, I'm actually going to be uh, being requesting uh, a replacement. But since I've already ported it, we'll see. Anyways, I hope that explains a bit about what I why I do what I do here and the how is obviously just with a dremel but <laughs> um but the uh the why behind it and how they come out looking um for what it's worth i also do take measurements and yes these do still have the normal top to bottom flare that's uh that's in all 660 pistons no distortion or anything